We've always had a pretty good idea of where mankind came from. Whether you go by biblical logic or follow the totally scientific route, there's always been an explanation for how things happened. But with that, there have also been questions. Questions about the way earlier civilizations have done things, and all of that have been a little harder to explain. One thing we haven't always considered, though, is what if both of these things had the same answer? 400,000 years ago, the Earth looked a lot different than it does today. Join us as we uncover the secrets about humanity that have always been hidden in plain sight, and how it might change the way we've thought about our own history forever. While there's a lot about the Earth and our history that we know today, it was the work of countless archaeologists that has got us here. All the information we have now has mainly been found over the past century, and archaeologist Henry Liard was just one of the people who were interested in learning more and more about the way past civilizations had lived on our planet. In 1849, Henry and his team went on an archaeological expedition to Mesopotamia, a region that's commonly known as the Cradle of Civilization. This area is where a lot of the more precious historical finds have come from, so it made sense for him to want to go here. But you see, Henry went so he'd find artifacts that could shine a light on the way people in the past would have lived in the region. He was expecting the usual pots, pans, coins, stuff like that. What he wasn't expecting were written accounts of these people in accurate detail, but that's exactly what he found. Sumerian tablets are probably one of the oldest uh, form of a written record that we have. One of the most noteworthy aspects of Mesopotamian civilization was its invention of writing. The ancient Mesopotamians developed the earliest known writing system, known as cuneiform, which involved inscribing clay tablets with wedge-shaped marks. This innovation allowed the possibility of recording laws, religious texts, literature, and administrative records, laying the foundation for written communication and the preservation of knowledge. Mesopotamia was a hub of cultural exchange and intellectual pursuits. Its cities were centers of learning, with scholars engaging in studies of mathematics, astronomy, literature, and law. The ancient Mesopotamians made astronomical observations, charting celestial movements and developing early calendars. These people were busy, which when you first hear it sounds great, but then you process the information and things get a little weird. You see, all of the things we've just listed are very scientific, things that would have required a lot of study and knowledge, knowledge that you wouldn't think would exist in that era, but it did, and there's proof of it. Proof in not just one or two, but a vast collection of approximately 20,000 clay tablets, and they were full of information. But that information is the type that couldn't have existed without help. Help from beings that weren't from the Earth. Liardé and his team delicately unearthed these fragile clay tablets, layer by layer, from the depths of the Sippar ruins. As the excavation continued, experts in the field were intrigued by the potential insights these tablets could bring. Scholars, linguists, and historians got together to decipher and translate the ancient script, piecing together fragments of information. The discovery of these clay tablets in Sippar opened a gateway to understanding the Sumerian civilization's intellectual pursuits and cultural achievements. And there was a lot to uncover. But the problem is, the language these tablets were written in isn't exactly the easiest to decipher. Unlike modern-day paper or digital mediums, the Sumerians utilized a more durable material for their writings clay, and it worked out perfectly. One of the fascinating aspects of the Sumerian language is that it is considered a linguistic isolate. Cuneiform writing was primarily done on clay tablets, using a stylus made of reed or bone. Since pens were a few centuries away still, the scribe would press the stylus into the soft clay, creating distinctive wedge-shaped marks. The tablets would then be dried in the sun or baked to harden the clay, ensuring the preservation of the inscriptions. This evolution in their writing system marked the birth of the cuneiform tablet script, which would become a crucial tool for communication and record-keeping in ancient Mesopotamia. The transition from tokens to writing directly on clay tablets was a significant advancement, allowing for more efficient and streamlined writing. In the 1970s, French archaeologist Denise Schmont Besserat made a groundbreaking discovery. She unveiled the relationship between the clay tokens and the development of the cuneiform tablet script. They are the immediate precursor of writing. This is where writing comes from. By studying thousands of clay tokens from different periods, she observed how the tokens gradually became simplified and abstracted, 
ultimately resembling the cuneiform script. Earth needed a redo, and a blank slate was created. If you just pause here for a second and think about the similarities between these texts and religious texts and scientific ones too, you'll find a lot. You've got the concept of evolution, so in a way, humans did evolve from apes, but it just wasn't the way we'd always thought. At the same time, the concept of gods and angels seems true too, because without it, the humans of that era wouldn't have existed. But there's another version of this that scientists actually focus more on, the version where the Anunnaki aren't angels or gods. They don't have wings, but they do belong to another realm, one that is highly intelligent, and where beings exist that have always known more than us. Yes, we're talking about aliens. The explanation here is that considering language and writing wasn't really the biggest thing back in the day, and since cuneiform is an isolated language, there are things that could easily get lost in translation. To understand this one in more detail, we need to take a look at the ancient astronaut theory. Proposed by Eric von Daniken, this theory suggests that advanced extraterrestrial beings visited Earth in ancient times and played a significant role in shaping human civilization. These extraterrestrial visitors had superior knowledge, technology, and abilities compared to the humans of the time. So they shared with early humans, leading to remarkable advancements in various aspects of human culture. Among the long list of Sumerian rulers, there is one notable female figure named Kubaba. In the historical records, Kubaba was described as a woman tavern keeper, and she ascended to the throne of the city-state of Kish around 2500 BC. Although limited information is available about Kubaba's reign and rise to power, she is credited with establishing a strong foundation for Kish and establishing a dynasty that endured for a remarkable 100 years. This recognition of a woman ruler in the Sumerian king list highlights the progressive nature of Sumerian society, where women were given the opportunity to hold positions of leadership and influence. Another thing that just proves that the people of that era knew exactly what they were doing. All of these things come together to create two parallels. One where we believe that mankind evolved to become smarter and smarter with time, and early humans just did the bare minimum of keeping the population going, and it was technological advancements that really pushed humanity forward. But on the other hand, you have all of this proof that humans weren't at the caveman level. They always knew what they were doing, and did things that we can't even explain unless you bring in the concept that they were, in fact, helped by someone. Whether that would be gods, or otherworldly aliens that helped humans get a head start and just disappeared. With the discoveries from Turkey and Peru, there are also hints that maybe the aliens didn't just leave all at once and actually kept coming back periodically if the humans needed them or simply kept tabs on everyone. Both concepts, though, are polar opposites. So which side of this argument do you land on and why? Let us know in the comments below. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And like always, we'll see you in the next one.